So let's talk about daytime formatting. And again, I'm going to clean up our translations. So we just have our greet text. And in our app component, I will use that greet so we have something on the screen. Now, in order to define our daytime formats similar to the messages, we can use the date time formats property, which again takes an object where we can define different formats for different languages. So we can do this in our translation documents. We already covered messages. Now we want to cover date time formats. So I will create a new property here and I will set this to an object. Then I can copy this, paste it for Spanish, also for Japanese. And for the examples, I can just grab what we have in the documentation under date time formatting. We have this short and long objects. I can copy this, paste it for the English. And they have another example for Japanese. I can copy this, paste it for Japanese. And I'm going to use the same example that we have in English for Spanish. So let's format these documents. And if we take a look at these formats, they are the options that you would pass to a new date constructor of JavaScript. So using these properties, we can define how to show a date or time on the screen. Let's go to our app.view and just have an example. I'm going to create another H1 and in the curly brackets, I am simply going to show a new date and then use the local data string to show the date. We go back to our website, we can see the month first and then the day and then the year. And that is because we set the locale to English US. But now we want to use these formats that we included in our translation documents. First, we need to provide them in the create i18 function. So in the date time formats object, again, we need to define the locale first. We can set the English to English dot date time formats and then repeat the same process for Spanish and Japanese. So let me copy this and paste it underneath. And we just want to change these messages to date time formats. Now, in order to use this in our component, we have another method. We used a T for translations, but for dates, we have a D method. So we can just extract that from this use I18. And then down here, instead of this new date, we can use that D method. This D method would look for a new date as the first argument. So we can just say new date and as a second argument, it is looking for the format we want to use. So we defined two formats. One is short and one is long, and we can use either of those formats. For example, let's say short. And that's all we have to do. We use the D function to show date time formats. It takes a date object as its first argument, and then the format we want to show. Let's also have the long version of the date so we can see them both at the same time. And if we go back to the website, here is the short version in English US, and here's the long version. If we switch the languages, we can see the differences. For example, in Spanish, the day goes first and then the month. And of course, this is in Japanese and it is auto translated. We can also have a third argument here and set the language of a date. For example, I want this short date to be dynamic, but for the long date, I always want to show the English version. So regardless of the language of our website, this line should always show the date in English. Now, if we go back to the website, even though we are in Japanese, but this line is in English and doesn't matter which language we select, this will always stay English. And this is pretty much about showing date formats using i18 package. We just have to define the formats in our translations and then use the D method to show the date. And all of these options are available on the MDN documentation on the date constructor. Now, there is also a custom component when it comes to date and translation and later on number, but I will cover that later. For now, this is how we can show date time formats.